Hello all, uh, welcome to another session on uh, VLSI design. So this time we are going to uh, deal with the subject of uh, FPGA based systems that's your uh, module 4 part B. Right, so we'll start with that. So first of all, uh, we actually in your previous semesters you already run so many subjects. So one of subjects is something like uh, digital electronics and you yes, uh, studied something like your uh, boolean expressions and uh, how to get some minimum term, max term, all those things. So you have studied something like flip flops, so all the logic elements related things you already have some basic knowledge of those things in your digital electronics subjects. At the same time uh, in the higher level semesters you actually studied something like uh, Verilog that is hardware description language. So Verilog and what is VHDL and everything. So first of all uh, let us uh, think about uh, so what actually actually goes into the uh, IC because so this actually uh, when you go for designing something so you start with some of the specifications and you need some expected outputs right so there will be some input variables will be there and you'll be having some output variables so basically you can just take it as a, a simple example uh, of how we can actually go and implement the logic circuits okay so first thing is you can take something like simple example here so we have some digital logic function is there and we have three input variables are there and uh, this is function we don't know that function here this is a black box we'll just have this the top level like this and we have one output output okay so then what i will do is so i can just uh, using the specifications i can derive some of the what actually happens inside the circuits and i will derive some truth table out of it okay so once i uh, get your uh, truth table out of it so then I can just try to go for uh, making an expression of boolean expressions. Okay, so this is your boolean expression. So in the, in the then we can go for that something like your uh, sum of product product expressions. So you will again the, go this particular uh, uh, expressions uh, to minimize the min terms, uh, product terms, and uh, we'll go for with some K map optimization, some other uh, uh, methods you're going to perform boolean logic minimizations okay so this is what you do so once you're done with that you want to implement this particular function so to implement this function what i will do you will actually use uh, some of the uh, logic gates or some of the ic's you're going to use depending upon what are the requirements here so you're going to use some of the logic circuits okay it may be something hardware actual hardware and uh, for that you're going to use something like an ic's so basically you can call it as so this this is what you uh, did in something like your lab that is your logic design lab or digital electronics lab so you use something like some 74 series ICs uh, and you have to you have actually derived some of the uh, realize some of the logic circuits okay something like some parachinator uh, parachinator so binary to gray something like that so you have derived some of the uh, logic circuits okay and outputs by using some of the ICs so basic is already available okay that that means you are actually making uh, these ICs to put on some PCBs and uh, uh, then to realize some functions okay so what exactly goes into this and this you already know so this actually this is your ICs and uh, this actually and gate NAND gate and actually but this particular circuit this this you already know these things okay how this transistors is going to switch uh, in this way okay so this this kind of things we can call as a fixed logic and uh, we also call it something like glue logic okay so this is the thing so we have some logic is there and we need to uh, implement in a hardware so one type of things you actually uh, followed in your semesters are you just find out some expression min term expressions then use some of the uh, logic gates ICs okay it may be and ICs or uh, NAND ICs or R ICs uh, with some series of ICs then you just interconnected them and you realized your expressions small logic functions okay in, in terms of hardware okay so other way is something like you can have uh, two other ways so when you actually can describe so instead of your wiring out and taking these things you actually describe your uh, specification and design in terms of a language so where something like which you are trading your very log how uh, you actually design your uh, any circuits okay so something here we are doing something have a very log code for a ripple carry adder okay so we have a ripple carry adder code for something like HDL level okay so once you got this hardware description level code so then we have whether two again we have two options okay so one option is you already uh, did in your HDL labs that actually 
uh, you have written same verla code and uh, for some adder ELU and everything so then you are implemented in terms of our downloaded or programmed to your FPGA okay hardware implementation you have done it okay you have performed some simulation and you have actually implemented in your hardware FPGA okay so similarly so there is another path also where using the same hardware description language where you are describing your system and you are going to end up with an actual IC of that entire circuit so this, this IC is actually exactly equal to so this ripple carry adder so this is also one way so you can actually ideally glow for glue logic where you are using various other standard components presents uh, ICs will be there and you are using those ICs to uh, connecting interconnecting them and you are getting your output logic at the same time so we have these two options okay so this is how we actually go for realizing any hardware uh, circuits okay so okay so we will try to concentrate on so these two so most probably the most of the time this will we will try to go for dealing with FPGAs okay and we'll use some ASIC to just you know to compare how it differs from FPGA okay how FPGA differs from ASIC okay so all these things will be there and uh, to perform these things you will have uh, a set of digital logic or digital uh, we call as algebra okay so those things uh, you already studied in digital electronics we call it a boolean algebra and uh, I don't want to go in detail of these things you can just uh, remember those concepts I'll just put it in front of you okay so we have boolean algebra this is something like we have so many things that is identity is there inversion and element is a plus 0 is equal to a or a dot 1 is equal to a so these are some of the laws you already uh, know these things using these uh, law uh, expressions or applying these laws you are going to minimize or reduce your logic expression so that you are reducing the uh, usage of the uh, gates or logic logic gates okay right at the same time so we have one thing uh, we call something like a concept of irredundancy so where we can call it as a logic expression expression uh, is irredundant if no literal can be removed from the expression so without changing its truth value okay and uh, you can say that example a b plus a b bar is redundant because it can be reduced to a okay so you can reduce that you can take a out of it and b plus b bar okay so this is actually redundant so this is one example for redundancy okay and uh, we have a concept of onset of function and offset of functions so onset of function nothing but uh, it's simply input values for the whatever the input values are there so for those input values the actual function what you are expressing will be true okay so if it is for that particular input values if the function is false we call as a offset of functions okay so these are some of the uh, uh, laws you can have uh, different uh, laws of algebra boolean algebra and we can actually go for in this case uh, we can actually this is the fully specified truth table how we can reduce these things and uh, okay with it with don't care because if you can see these two things uh, 0 0 and uh, 0 1 in this case so whatever the b value so if a is 0 so the function output function will be 1 so we can reduce this so that means so for these two things uh, the output f function f is not dependent on b you can say that it is depend only on a so we can say that is a b as a don't care condition so this is the thing and uh, at the same time we can go for uh, example of output don't care also so it's given here okay so this is the thing uh, we'll uh, I have some other uh, diagrams here so this is this is not this is just a uh, simple concept is just because it is in a textbook I just put it through okay so this are symbols so you are already aware of this inverter and gate nor gate how you represent these things and uh, whenever you see this symbol this is nothing but a multiplexer and uh, when you see these things you can call it as a it's an AL unit okay right so we have another thing uh, when we are we have a function so a plus sorry we have a bar plus a b is there or uh, any some any set of functions is there some of products so we can actually uh, replace some of the some of the product terms with some uh, extra the small sub functions so we can say we can replace uh, a b with something like g where g is equal to a b so i can just uh, rewrite this a function f as f is equal to a bar plus g so this this particular concept we call as a factored form so these are some of the boolean algebraic things so which we are uh, the basis of uh, reducing the terms into boolean expression and everything so this is going to happen all these things will going to happen uh, in eda tool 
uh, something like you have used xylene cyacy so these things this will happen when you uh, is going to perform some synthesis and uh, optimizations will be happening okay right so the next thing uh, let's come to the actual topic that's your uh, programmable device classification okay so this we already discussed in the previous session and we'll have some classification here we'll just try to grow, go through it so we have a programmable logic and uh, you can say we have uh, two categories program factory programmable devices and field programmable devices so factory programmable device we have something like rom and uh, we have something like mpga so mass programmable gate array so these two things are something like once programmed we cannot uh, uh, do nothing about it okay it's, it's programmed by your factory okay so then we have something like field programmable devices so which is classified uh, classified as uh, spld or cpld and fpga so spld nothing but simple pld cpld is but complex cpld and fpga field programmable gate array okay and in terms of cp spld we have uh, uh, prom will be there and pla pal and gal will be there so so how let us concentrate mo more on something like fpga so we are not uh, anyhow we are discussed this pla in a previous session okay so knowing these things uh, we already know this pla so this is spld we already studied in a previous session so we'll see how this cpld looks like and we will try to directly try to jump on to fpga logic okay right so this is how you uh, see your uh, cpld so this is something like the block diagram how we can see one particular block it's taken so we have something like pal like block or pla like block so whatever the block there is this nothing but your spld's okay so this is very complex we have more number of logic elements will be there and we have in between logic wires will be there and we have something like iwa blocks will be there to get into output outside world okay so this is how it looks like so pal block the reason but the spld block it may be pal or pls okay so in intermediate we have a connection wires okay so these connections wires usually will be programmable interconnects or programmable wires right so let's come for fpgas so how fpga looks like so this is how fpga looks like this is the architecture you can see okay you can see something like this are some of the boxes are present here so these boxes what you are seeing uh, these boxes so this are something like uh, we call as a uh, configuration logic block uh, configurable logic block that is something but clb okay we call it some configurable logic blocks and whatever the intermediate we have something like these lines so this is but horizontal channel so these are something like uh, interconnecting wires okay this is something like a vertical channel where you have this also some interconnection wire okay and uh, what you are saying in green boxes we can call as a switch box and uh, so these switch boxes so anyhow this this switch box we can uh, i will just uh, discuss this thing in detail in the further slides okay so basically you can see so we have uh, blocks will be there so fpg is made up of so clbs and uh, in between clbs you have uh, uh, interconnection networks okay so it will be something like a horizontal channel or vertical channel wires will be there and we have something like uh, switch boxes will be there so these are the things and here something like connection boxes okay and surrounding that fpg will have something like iwa pads or iwa blocks okay so this is your in general you can see uh, this is this, this will be your how your fpga looks like okay in terms of architecture right so we are just try to uh, explore in detail in depth so what actually goes inside here so you can see i told you it is made up of clbs these boxes are clbs so same thing is depicted here in a different uh, way that's it and uh, if you just expand these things so we have CLB here. This is something like connection boxes. I told you this. This is this is something about your connection boxes, and here something like uh, switch boxes. This this box green color is nothing but switch box. And if you expand that, you can see like this. Inside we are going to see like this. So this will be your CLB, and this will be your uh, connecting box. Uh, how it looks like, and this will be your actual switch box. So this switch box will have uh, interconnections. It's going to perform between. So how do you suppose this block should be connected to this particular block? So this switch network will try to take care of that pin, and it will try to connect a uh, blow or uh, interconnect uh, the particular lines to uh, reach this particular CLB. Okay, this is how it happens inside. Right. So this is basically how uh, general structure of your uh, FPGA. 
right so what actually is an fpga so fpga we can say it's a semiconductor device so that are based on around a matrix of configurable logic blocks and uh, all these clbs are connected via programmable interconnects okay so we can say it's something like a matrix of reconfigurable gate arrays okay so when actually whenever your fpga is configured so whatever the internal circuitry is there so it will be connected in a way that it's going to create a hardware implementation of the software application so whatever the software programming you're going to write so that software program is going to be completely a uh, hardware or creating in terms of hardware level okay so that's going to happen in fpga so internal circuitry will try to connect to creating a hardware implementation and uh, unlike your processors so fpgas use dedicated hardware for processing any logic okay and they do not have any operating systems okay so that's the one thing and uh, fpgas are truly parallel in nature so this this is the main reason why we can say that uh, uh, fpgas can be yeah uh, we can exploit something like highly parallelism uh, we can go to exploit in fpgas okay right uh, this truly parallel nature so different processing operations do not have to compete with the same resources as in terms of uh, cpu or processor okay so there one thing and uh, so we can have something like multiple control loops that's something like this this actually uh, say something like if we, if you have different logic blocks and which operates on different clock uh, frequencies so that's not going to affect any uh, io things uh, to force by the things okay so we can just go for uh, multiple clocks which is not going to affect each other any other uh, each other elements right so however unlike hardware printed circuit pcb designs so which have uh, fixed hardware resources so fpg systems actually literally rewire their internal circuitry to allow reconfiguration so what happens is so we have something like inter circuitry and wires will be there so once you program that they will try to uh, rewire themselves okay so that we call as a reconfiguration or programming okay so fpga devices deliver the performance and reliability of dedicated hardware circuitry okay so that's in terms of performance and reliability this is again i'm going to discuss this one in uh, upcoming slides okay so why why it is actually attaining in terms of performance okay so this fpg structure i already explained this one what actually it consist of and uh, you can say the logic blocks of an fpga okay so which are something like clbs so the clbs are nothing but your configurable logic blocks and what actually present inside your clbs okay so the clb inside your clb we call as logic blocks so it can be made of so many ways uh, one thing it can consist consist of a transistor pairs or uh, it may contain some like combination of uh basic gate something like nand gate and uh, xor gates it can have something like lookup tables and it can have something like multiplexers and it can something like have fan in and and or structures okay so basically so what goes inside your clb that depends on what type of fpg you are looking into okay and there are so many fpg architectures are there and there are so many vendors are there so you already are familiar with xilinx uh, fpgas and we have something like altera also and actel also so there are so many fpgs are there and what goes inside your clbs so that entirely depends on individual companies okay so how they actually go with their uh, infrastructure okay right so basically we can just uh, derive some of the fpga types so based on some of the characteristics so based on your implementation architecture so you can go for different varieties something like symmetrical array row based array and uh, hierarchical pld's and we can call as c of gates okay so these are not in your syllabus i'm just discussing uh, for sake of uh, completeness and uh, so we can just categorize in terms of logic implementation also how your logic will be implemented at the end of the day right so in terms of lookup table uh, we can categorize that one and if it is whether the fpg is multiplexer based or mux based mux based or whether it is a pld block or whether it is a nand gates okay so when you go for interconnect technology so we categorize your fpgs as uh, sram based or uh, anti fuse based or e prom based okay so this is how we can in a different way we can categorize your fpgs okay right so so we have some example here so if we just take an example of multiplexer based okay if your uh, fpga clb is made up of 
marks based what actually happens so this this one i'm just uh, taking this uh, entire thing here okay if i take this one and inside this particular uh, logic block so you can see the multiplexers okay so using this multiplexers your uh, whatever the boolean expressions you will get that will be realized at the end of the day right at the same time we can go for uh, lut based also so this actually you know thing but lut based uh we call as a uh, lookup table and this is the but clbs and this clb inside your clbs so we have several slices so in this case uh, we have something like one slice two three and four and inside your uh, slice we have a uh, logic cells okay we have called call as a logic cells okay and uh, here we have shown something like four slices we have shown and uh, these slices uh, can again differ with de depending upon your companies what company you are using uh depending upon your architecture okay so it may be 4 it may be 6 it may be 8 so that again depends on your vendor okay and uh, inside this slice also we have two logic cells depicted here and uh, this is again going to vary with different vendors okay so what goes inside this right and uh, we can typically expand this particular one slice so what goes into inside your slice okay so inside your slice we can see something like these two cells okay and in this cells we have some then two logic cells is depicted here and each logic cell contains something like four input lut six input lut some ram 116 into 1 ram some flip flop mux registers so these are the things which goes inside your logic cell right so this something like basic explanation so what actually your fpga consists of okay okay so to brief we have this is the architecture it's made up of clbs and each clb can be uh, in a different way i have taken something like mux based and lut based here so if it is mux based so your clb is made up of multiplexers okay because multiplexers can actually implement any logic we call it something like wagon wheel okay so that that is not come to you so we'll try to uh, get it off it okay so typically your multiplexer can implement any function okay right so you can just uh, google and you can check it out how multiplexer can be implement other uh, all all logic expressions right when you go for lut based so this is lut based and uh, we have a clb inside clb we have uh, slices and after your slices inside your cs slices we have lut's okay so this is the fpga structures you can see right so we'll discuss something like connection box So I told you we have connection box and switch box inside your FPGAs, and uh, this is your structure you can see, right? So connection box is but connects your I/O that is input output of logic block to interconnect channels, and your switch box actually connect horizontal and vertical channels. So this this is actually your switch box. This is how it looks like. So this entire thing is programmable. Okay. So whether this will con should come connect in front of this line or this line should be connected to this line. So all these things will be taken care by. switch box where your actual uh, interconnection happens okay right so we have something like some technology here how this interconnection happens so i have taken one simple example here something like anti fuse based anti fuse interconnect okay uh, in this case we can see if it is unprogrammed uh, uh, anti fuse links there is no connections here so there are something like the switches and uh, when you program them so this anti fuse will actually make connections okay So this is nothing but your programmable interconnect. Okay, so why why actually we go to, we should go for FPGAs? So we should go for FPGAs. We have several advantages over ASIC, and uh, we have some ASIC also. We have uh, some disadvantages and advantages. Okay, so when you go for FPGAs, so we have uh, several advantages. We have so one thing is fast programming and uh, testing time by the end user. okay that means so we can actually design very fast so in your lab we have done a design of alu or some other uh, implementations so you have designed very fast right you actually implemented in term hardware and you executed and checked it out okay that's very a uh, fast programming will be there and testing will be very uh, easy when compared to your asic flow or custom logic and uh, excellent for prototyping so what do you mean by prototyping means so when you want to design something and you want to end up with an asic for that and uh, first what you will do is once your program or logic is developed so you are going to verify uh, by implementing your logic in fpga first that we call as a prototyping 
so once you do the prototyping and everything is going fine so then you will transfer that particular uh, design to the asset flow okay that that is actually we call as a uh, prototyping and uh, can be reused for other designs again it's a reprogrammable so once you are implementing some half order circuit into your fpga then you later you can actually implement something like binary to gray converter right you can just flash it and you can actually implement other logic so it can be reused for other designs and cheaper so when you go for small number of volumes so you have something like 10 15 something like small number of values means so fpgas are something like uh, very cheaper in nature okay per unit cost is again more but still uh, when you go for some small volumes fpgas are cheaper when you if you want to try to implement your design when compared to asic okay it's simple like that uh, then it is a reprogrammable already you know and uh, lower financial risk so lower financial risk because uh, you are actually implementing fpg it's reprogrammable it's a one time you should take fpg you will try to test it okay and if you same thing if your logic if you want to uh, without fpg if you try to go for directly to asic okay and if somewhere in the middle you try to realize that you have done some mistakes and uh, some logic functionality is not going to happen so in that case what should happen so whatever the amount you are going to spend in asic so that is a very very huge amount okay so you are going to lose all those things okay so that is the financial risk so in this case fpga so financial risk is very low and the ease of design and modifications so if you want to change something you go back you program the fpga if there is anything wrong you come back to a uh, coding part or some whatever whatever level you change alter the program and alter the your logics and you again go for program it if further any changes are available uh, then you again you can just reprogram them and other thing is uh, cheaper design tools so you can just use a small eda whatever you are going to use so this will be uh, very uh, cheap in nature when compared to asics because even we can, you can see that uh, we have a cadence tool and that to have some limited uh, uh, options okay so front end limited options so no not other verification things so we are spending something like 7 to 8 lakh rupees for only uh, we are spending so many amount that is up to 7 to 8 lakhs uh, for 3 years and at the same time for 20 users so it's very costly so whatever the eda design tools you are going to use for asic it's very very costly in nature okay so when compared to fpga right so then coming to application specific ic so we can have some advantages there so it's faster very very faster right it's faster in nature because you are struggling and making your own chip pin to pin that means you are going to design logic in a layout level okay in terms of r and c value you are going to achieve the timing and everything on your own in that case you are having the very faster you are going to get the logic and it's a low power because you're going to optimize very few resources will be used okay it's an optimized one uh, that's why it has something low power consumption and it is cheaper when you have something like large volumes okay this again uh, things uh, we call something like uh, design cost uh, this again that will if you try to explain more of these things it will go in deeper again okay so you just understand if it is cheaper if we just uh, manufacture in a large volumes okay so it's it's actually very difficult for uh, uh, to explain these things which uh, briefly okay because these all these concepts are very very depth in nature and uh, to actually if we try to explain each one point i can we can go for explaining in terms of one on hour okay so, right so that's the thing uh, depth of this topic but uh, so for some reasons we need to complete in a something like bird's eye view i will try to go for that okay so cheaper in nature when you manufacture larger volume and uh, it's going to use less transistor per logic function right so fpg has some drawbacks so it's actually obviously slower than asic okay so almost up to three times lower and now almost in the present day they are this actually trying to uh, almost equate to ASIC level okay that that's again a different thing so i will discuss later and it's very power angry so something like more power consumption than ASIC and it's going to use more transistors per logic function and it's going to accumulate more area okay and ASIC drawbacks implemented implements a particular design it is not reprogrammable okay it's not programmable one and it's going to take several months to fabricate so long turnaround and uh, more expensive design tools as i said and very expensive engineering or mass cost okay 
so this uh, recurring cost and non recurring cost will come those things uh, uh, will get those things when you go for engineering cost so this 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 cost will be very much high and uh, this is things uh, can say fpga and is normal processor so in the normal processor going to execute in terms of memory and instructions and it's going to wait is going to execute the instructions so in fpga it's not going to ex not going to execute any instructions so it itself the executions will ex logic will become itself a hardware okay right so the typical flow we'll try to compare the typical flow of asic design and fpga design okay so almost we see it, it seems both are almost similar so but they are going to change in one particular concept okay so we have something like normal you already designed know these things in other uh, subjects so we have specification you will perform RTL coding we will write test bench and check for functionality we will do function simulation so once you do this function simulation we'll go for synthesis so doing synthesis you are going to use something like standard library cells provided by your foundry companies and uh, these standard cells we use it to perform synthesis and timing constraint so once you're going to perform synthesis you're going to get gate level netlist and those gate level netlist will be sent for physical design so that is we have something but uh, placement flow planning routing and everything so once you're done with your layout or something like that you're going to again for back on that one and you'll perform some timing analysis for there and again you'll go for tape out okay that's you're going to send your uh, see your design in terms of uh, gds format and you're going to send for the tape out chip production so this is your typical flow uh, then uh, so when you go for fpga flow you can see so you start with rtl coding just like this you will perform simulation uh, similar to your asic flow and you will perform some logic synthesis so this is where you are going to differ so these two flow is going to differ uh, it went when you go for synthesis okay when you perform synthesis in fpga so this synthesis is going to happen in terms of fpga requirement okay so not in terms of gate level logic okay it's going to this this particular uh, synthesis is a different one okay so that synthesis is again uh, uh, going to happen in terms of what type of device you have chosen okay in xilinx if you are doing some synthesis so that synthesis is going to happen in a different way okay so right so we have some design tools we can see here so for design you can use something like text editor verification model sim you have done it Synthesis, you can use something like uh, Xilinx ISC and PDR physical design implementation, Xilinx ISC and Xilinx Impact. So, this is something like two different comparison you can take. So, ASIC expensive and time consuming fabrication in semiconductor foundry, it will be expensive and time consuming and design all the way from behavioral description to physical layout. Okay, so when you go for FPGA, if not the case, you will try to buy your FPGA, which is already configured, ready hardware is available and you're not designing any physical layout there so your design is going to end with the bit string to configure the device you're not going to tape out or something like that so once you generate bit string you're going to get the hardware physical hardware uh, implemented in your fpga so these are several applications you can see a uh, wide range of markets are available okay for your fpga so automotive industry and other things okay yeah image processing so servers okay so military cryptography okay and your neural networks and everything and this is a set of public other applications you can see so aerospace and defense as a prototyping automotive and uh, consumer electronics data centers and high performance computing and storage something like uh, storage and network servers and everything and industrial purpose you can see and uh, medical purpose you can use something like fpgs and uh, video and image processing they are going to use at the same time you can go for wireless communications okay so these are several applications uh, you can see for your uh, fpgas okay right so to summarize the sessions uh, we have uh, learned something like uh, an asic is a unique type of integrated circuits so meant for specific applications but fpg is actually a reprogrammable ic and asic can no longer be altered once it is programmed or it is created okay so but fpg can change and it's common practice to design and test an FPGA before implementing on ASIC. This is what we call as uh, FPGA prototyping. And uh, an ASIC actually wastes very little material or resources when compared to FPGA. Okay, that means recurring costs are low. And FPGA is better than ASIC when you going to build some low volume production circuits. Okay, and this is some of the comparison table you already 
uh, seen something like time to market is a uh, fast in terms of PGA is low in terms of ASIC and uh, non recurring cost is high in terms of ASIC design low in terms of PGA and design flow is very complex and design flow is very simple here and unit cost is high actually per unit cost is high so in this case per unit, per unit cost is low and uh, performance wise is medium it is high and uh, power consumption so FPGA is very high power consumption when compared to ASIC and unit size you can have this medium this is actually low so this is actually a part one of your FPGA design uh, and we will try to continue this FPGA design in the next session with the other design flow okay thank you